This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you in partnership with ministryleague.com. We would love for more people to discover this show, so please rate and review us on iTunes or your podcast provider. Feel free to share on your social media and subscribe at benandtravis.com for the free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor podcast. Uh, with Ben and Travis. Uh, This is part two of our discussion about uh, my growing up in a broken home. And unfortunately, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Hopefully, you'll put up with that. Some of the video glitched uh, later on the back half of our interview, our discussion. Uh, Also, uh, I had a glitch and uh, forgot uh, one of the points I was trying to make. But as soon as we went off uh, air, uh, wouldn't you know it, I remembered the point. So I wanted to come back and insert that into the discussion. So you may notice a little bit of difference there, uh, you know, but uh, we appreciate all that you do. And hopefully, and with prayer, uh, this will be beneficial to all who hear it. Feel free to share uh, with anyone who might find it beneficial and, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up or whatever it is you're listening on. Give us a Give us a little promotion there. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. You know, was there some things, Travis, that you can remember that really helped you? Things that people said, things people did, or that really didn't help you <laughs> through that yeah. time? You know, I, I, I was drawn to groups of people. Um, I think that that's one reason I played football. Um, that's one reason I love the church. And I've been a minister long enough. That, you know, I've had my feelings hurt by the church. I've had my feelings hurt by church members. Um, but, you know, I just fell in love with the church. I had a great youth group, you know, I, you know, and we weren't a huge youth group. And we didn't just do a whole lot of activities and events, but we were together. And I needed that. You know, nobody was poking around wondering how I was doing. I mean, it could have been beneficial. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I knew I had people. I had people who uh, claimed me, even though Ben and and the church at Jacksonburg had plenty of reasons not to. And I mean, I was plenty annoying and I was going through things. I'm sure people understood that. Hey, he's annoying because things are going on that he can't control. And so, you know, it's kind of like this way of uh, letting loose. And I'm just so thankful for a church family that didn't judge. You know, I never felt judged. Maybe there was, you know, man, that guy needs to get it together. But I never felt that. And, you know, that was a small congregation. What do you think? We had 80, 90 members. Uh If if that many. A youth group of 10 people. But they were my people, you know. And uh, they they policed me, kept me in line. And I'm appreciative of that. You know, if I, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have Ben Hayes in my life. And. Uh, certainly when we got to freed, but, um, you know, it was, it was things like that. I was drawn to that. I was my football coaches. I needed people in my life to, to keep me in line and call me down when it was necessary. And so I'm very appreciative of that. And I would encourage youth ministers to yes, reach out, but also call that person and, and tell them if they're doing something that's disruptive or whatever, you know, that's part of love too, you know, letting them know that, Hey man, that's just too far. That's inappropriate. Chill out. And I've certainly had plenty of those conversations, Will, uh, where people had to have that with me, you know, on the flip side of not helping, um, you know, I've heard, you know, I guess I've got enough people when I was growing up who I felt had abandoned me without, someone else feel like I need to please somebody else. You know, no one, my mom, my dad, now that I look back, there was never anything where I felt that I look at and go, well, they were literally abandoning me. You know, they were saying things and doing things that they just, you know, but at the time it felt that way to some degree, you know, with my dad, you know? And so I had enough people who did that without someone else threatening me that are making me feel like, hey, if you don't get it together, you know, you can't be a part, you know, we're going to put some, you know, and I know there's a balance of that from, from a Christian standpoint. Um, 
but putting extra hoops for someone to jump through to be a part is probably not a good idea anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had plenty of, and a lot of them were make believe, uh, things that people were doing to push me aside. And so, you know, that hand on the shoulder are coming up and, and making a person feel even more involved and more essential, I guess is a good word. Um, really helped. Whereas, you know, some people who, you know, you had to have this certain whatever, whatever the hoop was, uh, didn't help. Yeah, I can remember something kind of on the flip side of that. Um, I can remember, and you still are, you're a loyal person. Like Travis has always been that guy that if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And, uh, and you were extremely loyal and, to such a degree that you did not like any kind of unloyalness, you know. Yeah, and I don't know yeah. any yeah. any of us yeah, do. You're exactly but, right. But if somebody ever said, "Hey, I'm gonna do this," and didn't, Travis was pretty I'm solid done. on. I'm, I'm done, done with, with that. You. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not great, you know. In a yeah. minister, that's not great. I mean, I. It, it's really, and I still struggle with that. I still, I mean, I can have a, a great relationship with someone and. You know, if they do something that I perceive, it doesn't even have to be really all that big a deal. That's the one thing great about Whitney, you know, is because I've preached, you know, if it's a big enough deal, you need to go talk to them. And if it's not, you need to just forget about it and move on. And she's good to remind me of my sermon points. <laughs> hey, is this a, you need to call that guy. Yeah, you, you need to call and have a conversation with that guy or get over it. And, you know, I've got enough antisocial in me from. Uh, people in my family that a lot of times I'm like, I, it's just easier to get over that and, and move on. And, and, but yeah, I think that's a great point and, and one that I wouldn't bring out on my own, but yes, uh, you know, loyalty is such a big deal to me to some point it's a stumbling block. But if that was true for you, I wonder too, how many other kids out there when, when you go, well, I wonder why they all of a sudden, stopped coming to youth activities or they all of a sudden did this or that or the other maybe it was a perception of that loyalty yeah. has been disrupted somewhere and so just making youth ministers other parents uh or or you know mentors or whatever aware that sometimes even those like you said perception is much greater than reality yeah. and it may just be that there was a perception of something and that's where i think you know talk less, listen more is so important, you know, to listen to what's going on in the, in the kids' mind and in the kids' lives. Yeah. Travis, I think one thing for me is the process of divorce. Uh, I, I remember growing up, you know, mom and dad would tell me, hey, this, you know, this has happened. So-and-so is getting a divorce. And then it's like, oh, they got the divorce. Now everything's good. You know, it's almost like that moment has happened. And, you know, of course, as people get older, you understand, like, once it happens, that's nowhere near the end of the road. And, and so it's even like, how do we help people through the process of divorce? Not just, hey, mom and dad are splitting up. They've separated. Now it's happened. I have this new life now. And what, do, what do we need to continue to do as the church and as friends to continue that help? Because I don't... I don't, and maybe it's an unfair statement, fair statement. I don't know that the divorce stuff ever stops affecting you. You know, you know, of course I've never been there, so I can't, I can't speak to that, but I feel like it's just a life altering thing and event. So, so how do we help through the process of it? I think that, you know, once again, I was blessed to have a tremendous youth group, um, and I was at all the events, you know, I loved gospel meetings. I loved anything to kind of get out. And, and once again, I, I don't want anybody to think that my home life was bad. I had a tremendous home life where I got to do a lot of things. And a lot of that was because I had aunts and uncles who invested in me and made sure I got to go to Alabama games and I was clothed and I had every experience that, you know, a guy like Ben had, you know, and a lot of it was together. You know, I got to go to camps and I got to go do those things, but a lot of people don't have that. And so when that split happens, you know, you know, one parent may not want their kid going to Christian camp or they don't feel like that's how the money that they are having to give should be spent on. And so, you know, finding and making sure those kids 
know that they can go and do things just like anybody else can do things and that they're just as much a part. Um, you know, I remember sitting at Jacksonburg and seeing Kirk, you know, Ben's older brother lead singing and Ben do those things. And, you know, I was, you know, I felt like, and I remember saying to my mom, Hey, when I get older, I'm going to do those things. I'm going to be a part and I'm going to do those things. And I never felt because of my parents' situation that I couldn't do those things. You know, there was, there was no, it was not my fault. I certainly got that from the church. I got it from my parents, you know, and, and I'm sure that, you know, the, the divorce is not the way that God wants us to live. It's not his plan for marriage at all. If it can be avoided at all costs, but you know, that wasn't something that I felt from the church was an issue with me. And I'm so thankful for that, that it was never projected on me. that I was able to lead singing and do everything that I wanted to do, um, you know, but I didn't feel pressured to do it either. But, you know, having someone, an older person that I can confide in who's not going to go and tell my parents. And I know that sounds weird. I know there are things that we have to tell parents. I've told people before as a minister, hey, I want you to come share with me. For the most part, we'll keep this between us unless it's something that endangers you and then I'm going to have to tell. But, you know, that I could be mad at my mom and tell this person and know that they're not going to go, hey, he's mad at you or be mad at my dad and just share my emotions and how hurt I was. Um, you know, that was important. I can't necessarily, you know, obviously Ben and I had talks, but he wasn't necessarily an adult, you know. Um, <laughs> not, I'm still know that, not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I don't know that I had that. You know, I don't know that I had that. And even though my mom offered to take us to counseling, you know, she's a big proponent. My wife's a big proponent of counseling now. You know, I never took her up on that uh, because, you know, I just wanted to bury things. I wanted to bury it, bury it, bury it. And I felt like if I ever let the can open, I wouldn't ever get it shut again. You know, yeah. it, to a large degree, I still feel that way, you know, um, and it's weird, but it's almost like I've grown up feeling that way. I don't think about visiting my dad. That's nothing that even crosses my mind. And, you know, I, I pretty much drive by his house. I'm telling myself every time I come from Fayetteville and I'm past it before I even think. Because I've trained myself not to go there. And uh, I'd be willing to guess that Ben, I'm not going to ask him to analyze me here, but that's probably not a good thing. You know, that's not the, the probably the, the best approach, to say the least. Mm. Well, we all have things that we do to cope and to survive. And I think that is, is one of those things is at some point, you know, without getting too much into that, the, the you know, when you have to shut those emotions down so many times because of whatever, you know, because of hurt, because of frustration, because of anger towards someone or something, then eventually it's just, I'm just going to avoid it by not even having it. You know, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let my mind go to that point to where I can be disappointed. I'm just going to avoid the scenario altogether. And then it just becomes natural just to avoid it, you know? So yeah, I mean th those are all, um, and I know you're 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 opening up some things today that, like you said, you don't really want to open up and get too deep. Uh, you haven't wanted to, but you're doing that on here a little bit and and sharing those things. But I feel like there's other people out there that are going to benefit from what you're sharing um, because everybody, it's just like grief, and and it is grief. Let's just be honest. D you know, divorce is grief. Um, you, you go through the emotions of grief with it. And so no one person's grief is the same. And so, you know, your experience isn't going to be the same as the experiences of some kid right now, but at least it helps, I guess, normalize, Hey, yeah, I've, I've experienced that. And, you know, for a kid now or a teenager now listening to this, you know, look, at what that has kind of been like for you through those years. And, you know, how can we do some things, one, to survive it like Travis has survived it? Um, but also maybe, hey, some of these things that Travis still struggle is struggling with, 
might could be avoided through some other um, some other avenues too. Like you said, maybe taking your parents up on the offer to go to counseling or whatever else. Yeah, I, I would certainly encourage that for sure um, to get that done. Uh, you know, uh, there are things that I that come up every once in a while that bubble up to the the surface, you know, and it's kind of like, how do I deal with that? And I'm thankful once again for my wife because we can, I have someone to confide in and talk to. Of course, you know, God has been a major source. You know, I can remember thinking as a young, young, and even around that time, I was saying, hey, I see Ben Hayes and Dell and Kurt and those guys leading. I can do those things. It was simpler to, you know, the thought of, I'm going to let God use this one day. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to go into youth ministry. I'm going to work with youth and young people and help them through similar things so i'm sorry will i think cut you out there yeah i i was just gonna say to me that's the coolest part about the church is there's people you know like you that have gone through scenarios and we can point those kids to go look look where travis is look where other people are even though they've experienced these exact same things or situations And, and to me that's just such a positive thing to go man you know, as crazy as Ben and Travis are, like, here's Travis doing all this stuff at CYC, these youth retreats, you know, mentoring football players, and he's been in the same boat that you've been in. And it may be a whole lot different storm, but he's been there, and look, he he's successful. You know, and I think that's just such a a wonderful thing about the way God created the church, is that he put people in our lives that we can look at and go, man, if they did it, I can accomplish it too. Um, and so I just think that that's really cool. I appreciate you, you know, sharing your story uh, because of the way it will motivate other people. And it gives people, you know, that I'm around teenagers, somebody that I can point to and go, look, if, if they did it, you can do it too. And I think that's just a really cool thing. Yeah. And I've said for a long time, I think that, uh, you know, when, when we start talking about the people who motivate us, the people who inspire us are people who've been through stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not the person who's never been through anything. And some and, things too, right? <laughs> and some things too. That's exactly right. And, and so, you know, when they've been through those things, we can see them. I mean, look, every Bible character that we think of as an inspiration went through a difficult time, went through a storm but God got them through. That's what this whole podcast was sort of born out of uh, was the idea of Travis's leukemia and then other things and other people that we were inspired by. And so we want to continue. Um, as you know, we started this our fourth ep- uh, fourth season. Um, and so, you know, as we do that, we want to continue with that, uh, with the helping, the healing and the humor, um, just to try to help people go through those battles and those struggles. So let me, um, let, as we kind of close out, Travis, let me, I want to say to, one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. If you don't mind. Um, just two things. Um, for those of you that may be going through it, uh, you know, it's kind of natural. And I, I remember, and I'll, this is me repenting, I guess here on <laughs> the podcast, but you know, I can remember somewhat resenting, you know, people who had that, you know, had the mom and dad at home and stayed together. You know, there were, you know, uh, you know, I resented Ben sometimes, you know, hey, man. But then I grew up and I realized, man, Ben, they had their issues, too. You know, they've got problems that are going. Everybody does. It was just that was not necessarily one of them. And so, you know, that was something that was big to me when I was growing up. It was like, you know, these other people, you know, they've got the picket fence. They've got the 50s sitcom relationships. And, well, that's just not true. That's not reality. Um, you know, anybody is susceptible to any of this stuff. Uh, you know, number two, the devil is always looking for a foothold. And so in my experience of trying to seek out, uh, acceptance, that loyalty, uh, it was really a temptation and, and unfortunately one that I gave into to kind of find that elsewhere, um, but, you know, when when something it's kind of like when Jesus talks about cleaning the house, removing the demons or removing the demon and not replacing it with something and then seven more. And, you know, the, the latter stat, the latter state is worse than the, the first. And so, you know, it, you know, Jesus also talked about serving. You can't serve two masters and he infers in that you're going to serve 
something or someone. And so, you know, just to remember that, you know, that there may be a vacuum there where that person used to be, but you're going to try to fill it with something. And so helping someone who's going through that, but also if you're going through that, understanding that, you know, Satan doesn't care, um, sin doesn't care, uh, that you're hurting, it's going to use anything it can to, to, get into your life. And so you need to be aware of that. If you know somebody who's going through it, you need to be a part of warring against that. And so those are just some things that I know from my experience that I gave into a lot of times trying to find something to fill that spot, that God-shaped hole. Uh, It really was a God-shaped hole, not a dad or mom-shaped hole. Um, And so that just gets magnified when you go through something uh, like this in in your life as especially as a young person but yeah i think what you said about the old testament characters i I, i'm encouraged by that so much because you know through the working of the holy spirit um you know we're able to see things a little more clearly and the reality of the situation is that yeah those guys were great but the only thing really great about them was god was the consistent and he was able to redeem those things. So I just wanted to ask a couple of things. Um, you know, I know like here during uh, the COVID stuff, there was the the little news spot. I can't even remember the guy's name, John, that was on the office. I think um, that did the some good news. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Uh, I don't remember how to pronounce his last name. Anyway, Krasinski. Uh, yeah, Krasinski. So. Um, Anyway, he would do the some good news. So I just wanted to see, like, I know we had a really big weekend last weekend. CYC was awesome. We've already talked about that. Uh, Will, uh, my my kids were with Will. Uh, they kind of did a thing at the church. So I just wanted to see if either one of you just had some good news to share. And Travis, you may have other good news besides CYC, but what are some of the big takeaways of CYC that you had? Uh, people put up with us, man. I mean, we're just... <laughs> We're just having fun, you know. I, I don't. I think that comes across, you know, that things could probably be better. Uh, you know, they can always be better. I'm a firm believer that everything needs reform. Uh, but man, we're just spitballing and having a blast. You know, I, I, the only thing that I would love to have had is had Will there because I mean, uh, he probably could have made things look a little better. But he certainly did his job back home, getting us ready for the weekend. But, you know, it's just something about getting together with as many Christians as you can, whether it's at home with the youth group or, you know, with a large group of CYC and to see, you know, I, I've thought about the passage where God says, you know, the gates of hell. Jesus says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, you know, and to understand that, yes, sin is aggressive, Satan is aggressive, but, um, you know, God's putting the full court press on us. He, he wants you he wants yep. us. He wants us to be with him for eternity. And there's no one more aggressively seeking you out than God. And I guess that kind of plays into that point um, that I was going to make is that, you know, you know, God wants you on his team. And, you know, regardless, nobody likes being picked last, um, but, but God has picked you and he's not picked you last. Uh, yeah. He sent his only son. To, to take you first. He, he sent him for Ben. He sent him for Will. He sent him for me. And whoever's listening to this, he left He left the place we all want to be. And I love you guys. But when I get to heaven, don't be calling me back here, okay? Uh, <laughs> I love you. But I don't want to come back here. But Jesus saw each one of us. You know, all those people at CYC, all those people at Highland Park this weekend. Uh, and, and he came after us with everything he's got. And, uh, man, that's some good news. I don't know if it gets any better. I think I just stole all y'all's thunder. So. I, think, I think that is the good news. And, <laughs> and I love the point that if we believe that, that Satan is pursuing us, that God is pursuing us more. You know, and I love that idea of if if God can, you know, if Satan can tempt us, then the Spirit can can also save us, tempt us with good things, you know, and towards the good things. And so, um, you know, God is much more powerful than anything Satan's got to throw at us. So I like that. Will, you got anything? Yeah, I mean, I don't have much to ask since Travis stole the thunder, but 
<laughs> here's here's the one good thing. We, go first. <laughs> we had a uh, we had a phenomenal weekend. Matt Cook came down uh, from Freed Hardeman, did a whole thing on God's will for our life, how the Spirit works in our life. Uh, just a dynamite weekend. Uh, and we had we been at CYC, we would have been on the front row. Blake Holloman and I would have been there. Uh, it would no have been a staple without a fact or with no doubt there. It would have been a fact. Uh, but we put together a 18 hole putt putt golf course in our church building. Um, gave away some AirPod Pros, which shout out to Ava who won ours. Um, but what we did is we had I had Blake Holloman. Uh, Grant, Sarah Goodman, and Matthew Harrison, I'll shout out all four of them, and they put a hole-in-one in our baptistry, uh, and so we played putt-putt golf into our baptistry, and it was, uh, we got up in the baptistry, there's still like 65 golf balls in our baptistry <laughs> right now uh, that I have to clean out, or it's going to make for an awkward baptism, uh, but it, I mean, we just had a great weekend, had a lot of fun doing that stuff, and so... Uh, we thought it was pretty cool to uh, end our putt putt golf course into our baptistry and just had a really good time. Uh, and with if it's them. not sacrilege to do so, uh, yeah. I think that needs to be on the email. Like the putt putt, <laughs> like you've got a couple of videos of people yeah. putting onto that hole, and yeah. it's pretty phenomenal. I'm not going to lie. Awesome. I liked it. Yeah, we had a couple of people that were like, is this like creating something okay. that should be in the baptistry? And I was like, I, I think the Lord's okay with it. So. Uh, it's, we, it's water. It's water. If, if he can clean it's, me, if he can take me and clean me in baptism, then a couple of golf balls ain't, ain't going to change much. Well, so. I, my golf game needs some cleaning up. I'll tell you that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I guess one more thing of good news, you know, I think that with the situation we've talked about today in any situation uh, that God can work forgiveness, um, I was able to at one point a few years back, uh, express my forgiveness to to my my dad and that was just a big deal for me and i know that that was not of me that's not selfish me that was a holy spirit thing and uh you know the the freedom that forgiveness brings whether anybody ever asked for it or not if you can hone that skill of forgiveness and kind of putting yourself in their shoes and trying to understand where they come from man that's just uh a tremendous skill that I think the Holy Spirit gives us. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for people like you, Ben, who do what you do. I'm certainly thankful for youth ministers. Doug Jackson, shout out to you, man, uh, for being such a huge part of my life. Um, he put up with a lot for a month. He did. But, you know, thankful for guys like Will and Ben who, who do so much. And without you guys, there are a lot of people out there who'd be hurting a lot more. So thanks, guys. We talk a lot about the importance of mental and emotional health on the podcast, but what if you're concerned about the emotional health of a child? Sometimes, after a major change, a child may begin to struggle emotionally or socially. You can tell that they are struggling because they might begin to behave badly or have extreme feelings of worry or sadness. They might even engage in destructive behaviors or regress in their normal development. Children don't have the ability to express their concerns verbally as you and I do. Play therapy might be the answer. In play therapy, toys are like the child's words, and play is the child's language. Amy Thompson at Serenity Counseling helps children who may be struggling emotionally or socially learn more adaptive behaviors. Through play therapy, a child can also learn to communicate with others, express feelings, develop problem-solving skills, and learn a variety of ways of relating to others. Give Amy a call at 256-263-6367 to find out more about how play therapy might be just what you've been searching for. HCU offers dual enrollment credit. Know a high schooler who needs a college credit? Heritage Christian University offers general education courses so your high schooler can get ahead. Feel at ease knowing your child will have Christian instructors. Only $100 per class. To find out more, email rharrison at hcu.edu or click apply now at www.hcu.edu. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. 
Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping, healing, and humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.